don't know why a lot of hairstylists and um makeup artists and you know nowadays get so big headed and treat their clients like like they don't matter like they they're your whole business they the ones giving you that money sis like hey beauties what's up welcome back to another video i'm back for another beauty business series i had to change up the name i was calling it beauty meets business but then after i posted that i realized somebody else's channel name was beauty meets business so i was like i want to be a copycat so i'm gonna change it up just a little bit beauty business and this is all about how to be successful in the beauty industry my story on how i have become successful in the beauty industry um built up a good clientele been a really popular hairstylist opened a salon um, and became like a successful beauty vlogger or beauty youtuber whatever you want to call it right here on YouTube so basically what this series is is me sharing my story most of all my story and sharing my tips of success on how you can be successful in this industry too because I feel like we all have so much to share we have so much to learn from each other why not try to reach back and help somebody else um, with some tips or whatever we can give to help them win too because there's room for everybody to win okay um, so yeah we're gonna drink a little wine tonight I got my little, my little snacks Okay, I got my notes, girl. We can stay focused and on topic. And I'm gonna give y'all all the tea on how to build your clientele, how I build my clientele, and some really, really, really realistic and helpful tips that will really get you a substantial clientele. Even if it's not a huge, huge, you know, popular clientele, it would definitely get you some type of clientele, like from jump. So if y'all keeping up on these series, my first video, y'all wanna go check that out. I want y'all to like go in order and watch these videos because it's gonna all, you know, lead up to where I am today and like tips that I can give you to be successful in these areas that I was successful in so yeah make sure you start with video number one which was my cosmetology school experience which is basically like how it all began for me my really my real start in the whole hair field and you know my cosmetology school experience and all that good stuff so make sure y'all go check that out first and then come back to this video all right yeah, people ask me this all the time how do you build a clientele how do I start this also applies to makeup artists estheticians and stuff like that basically people who create their own clientele and you know run their business based upon their clientele so first I just want to go ahead and share a little bit of my story even though I already kind of did in that first video I'm gonna just kind of give you a quick rewind rewind what is that a quick little rerun if you missed you know anything but basically the start of my clientele came at 12 years old okay um yeah i was just walking around the neighborhood doing everybody in the neighborhood hair doing my sister god blessed me with two sisters and a mom that i could practice on so i just did their hair all the time they were like my guinea pigs and they just let me do anything and everything to their hair i had friends that i i just did i just stayed doing everybody's hair and that's what really got my clientele started of course i wasn't getting paid like money from my sisters and stuff to do their hair i was getting paid a little bit like five dollars around the block and stuff like that i just was doing hair just doing it so everybody could see that i could do it and and yeah that's how it all began for me I really had a good substantial clientele by the time I was like 15 16 years old like literally I was young I started out young doing it so by the time I was 16 I had like a really steady you know amount of people coming to get their hair done it was older people like I had older clients people in my high school I was really like popular in my high school for doing hair everybody knew me to do hair everybody would come up to me asking about hair all the time so I was really popular in my high school as a hairstylist just in my city like I remember people would come up to me <laughs> when I was out to eat like girl I gotta ask you something more. Oh, how can I set an appointment can I make an appointment girl like I was really I had like a really good buzz going on in my city known for doing hair because I had just been doing it for so long and yeah and i'm gonna go ahead and share with you guys some really helpful tips that i use some things that i probably would do differently or things that i've learned throughout the years on how to you know create my clientele and how to maintain my clientele and that is like the most important thing maintaining your clientele getting clientele is that's the easiest part but maintaining your clientele is a different story and i'm about to go ahead and give y'all all a ticker so if you would ask me years ago how can I build my clientele? I probably would have told you word of mouth, but I'm gonna go ahead and, 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 and change it up and say social media because social media has become the biggest platform for you to share things, for you to get popular, for you to build clientele, for you to have a por portfolio, like social media. If you do not have a social media, I, in this day and age trying to become a hairstylist and a makeup artist I don't even know how you doing it girl you need to give me some tips because I don't know how you doing it without a social media platform now there are some stylists that you know 
definitely have a good clientele it might be like an older um crowd that they have an older clientele that they have that don't have nothing to do with social media you know they just call on the phone you know what i'm saying kicking it old school that's totally fine but i feel like if you're trying to reach towards the younger generation and reach a larger amount of people you definitely want to take to social media i'm gonna give you a few tips about putting your business on social media okay and i might talk i ain't talking about your bedroom business i'm talking about your brand business okay honey you want to have a separate page for your business and if it's not a separate page you want to kind of keep it business friendly because if you want to attract a whole bunch of different variety of people you don't want to be you know booty popping and stuff and then it turn off some older people but it's all about what who you trying to reach because honestly you can have you a bomb instagram with twerking and everything on it and have you a really great great clientele but it just depends on who you want to reach if you try to reach like basically everybody like the kids okay the, the grown-ups your age the old folk you want to kind of have a clean slate um social media and if you do do all that drinking and twerking and stuff and partying that you think you might deter people from your business you want to have a separate account for that so you can rem you know remain a professional look you know how you be turning up at the club on saturday but then you go to church on sunday and you want that sunday to be your business account like for real i'm just keeping it real and that definitely draws a lot of different people in and it makes you look just real professional and it's like oh this girl like you just want to display only your work on that page and so people can just get a look at your work i'm sure some people just don't want to see all that some people don't care about you you in the club and stuff like that they just want to see what you can do they see your hairstyles and it's like boom boom bam make sure you're taking pictures 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 of your hairstyles and building up your social media um portfolio that is really 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 important take lots of pictures lots of People want to see the pictures. Don't just you can't just tell somebody you do a good job, but they got to see it with their own two eyes. Okay, seeing is believing. Another tip from the social media aspect of things is make sure you have. Uh, oh, excuse me. Is make sure that you are hashtagging. Oh, girl. If you doing hair like in a certain area, always hashtag. Like I'm gonna use Flint for an example. Hashtag Flint hair flint silk press or something like that because people search hashtags when you're looking for like a new stylist in your areas a lot of people just go right on instagram hashtag they city hashtag hair and you want your stuff to be popping up in that region okay start you your own hashtag like for me i do trj hair or trj beauty and both of those hashtags if you look that up you'll see all like my stuff something i got from i don't know what to call this guy he was like a social media analysis or whatever he was kind of like looking at my instagram and telling me what i could do better and things like that i was supposed to meet with him i never did but anyway he basically told me like to put some dots like between your caption and then the hashtags because hashtags look a little more classy when they below and you know you know what i'm saying y'all catch my drift another tip for social media is videos and which ugh, videos have been such a huge boost for me like if i was still doing hair behind the chair girl once your videos you start um you know hashtagging those videos they get a chance to get on the explore page and you know people love seeing videos on instagram little fast videos don't make them slow now the little fast videos that you put on instagram of you doing hair and you you know what i'm saying the quick little transformations people love that stuff you get so much traffic from those instagram videos other like companies and like popular hair pages will be like reposting your stuff that's another thing too you want to like tag popular hair pages so you can get featured on that page a lot of people can see you come follow you that's how i got like such a good following on instagram is from my videos and from other companies and other you know popular hair pages tagging me and my you know picture or video so that is definitely important put them videos up people love it that's how you'll get a big following on social media and in turn that's how you get more clients so yes so number two is word of mouth this is the second main key in building your clientele when i say word of mouth would have been my number one like i said some years ago because we didn't really have you know all the social media this when i was 12 or 13 and so we didn't have all that we just had myspace and stuff but didn't really have that big advantage to get, get like some uh followers and get clients off of social media like we do now but word of mouth is still just as important as social media let me tell you why girl Word of mouth is like, and your clients that's walking around with your hairstyles and what you did is basically your walking live. Okay, live baby business cards. They are live human business cards. That has honestly been one of my biggest ways that I have gained 
clientele from like from the early stages when we didn't have social media popping like that. And I have realized that word of mouth can be detrimental or word of mouth can be the other word, what you would call. But word of mouth can, yeah, can do two things. First of all, you want to make sure you're putting out quality work on each one of your clients. You don't want to be doing rushed, sloppy jobs because that person going to be walking around with a rushed, sloppy head. And then you you know how people love to give reviews. You love giving reviews. I love giving reviews on Amazon. I, the first thing I do, I'm looking up a nail salon. I go straight to the reviews. <laughs> looking up a restaurant, I go straight to the reviews. So these people who you touching, you touching their head and you blessing them, you want to make sure it's done right because, first of all, if you did a bad job, that's going to go a long way. You don't want it to be, who did your hair? You want it to be, oh, girl, yes, who did your hair? You want it to be that, who did your hair, okay? Because when somebody got a bad hair job, they're going to tell everybody. They're going to tell everybody. I seen it with my own two eyes on Facebook. So people be blasting. People are like, look at this shit. Look what she did. And, oh, and they'll tag the people and everything. Like, this is the hor most horrible job I ever had. Girl, it can go one or two ways. Word of mouth is definitely important because if you're doing a great quality job on your clients, they are walking business cards. They're going to tell their whole family about you. Everybody's going to ask them who did their hair. To this day, people have always asked me who do my hair. I just say myself. When I was like actually behind the chair, I had my cards, my business cards on deck. I hand them a card. I did my hair myself. I'm a hairstylist. Check me out. Bam. I always got clients that way. But yourself is a walking business card. Your clients is a walking business card. So make sure you putting out quality content, girl. Because I'm telling you, they're going to let everybody know who did it. Just keep that in mind. So number three, if you are first starting out, this is for my people who first start out fresh out of cosmetology school or don't have a clientele at all. Um, just learn how to do hair, whatever the case may be. Kids. You want to run lots of specials. A lot of people don't like hearing this because you feel like, you know, especially if you do a good job and you know you good, you should definitely know your worth. You should definitely charge what you're worth. But when you're starting out and you don't have anything to start with, run a lot of specials. And let me tell you why this is the bait, why this is the click and the bait, okay? When you're running them specials, people are coming in, first of all, for the low prices. But if you offer a quality service and they see what you have done, and they was like, and they like, oh, okay. And even after that special is over, they're gonna come back because why you did a quality job. So that's how you like basically bait in new clients. That's how you bait in lots of clients because everybody loves a special. Whenever I ran a special, my book got booked so quick. <laughs> okay, like I, I booked up so fast every time I ran a special. Like everybody comes to see you. And like I said, once you give them them quality service, they're gonna kind of be hooked. You know what I'm saying? They gonna be hooked to you, so they don't even care if the price go up a little bit. They like, you know what? I'll pay. Cause people pay for quality. I know I do. If I find somebody I like to do something, or if I find a quality product, I'm gonna keep getting that product. I don't care how much it costs. You know, obviously if it's in my means, but I'm gonna keep getting it because I like it. It's good quality. It works for me. Alright, my bad. I have to change my battery. So. so that's the deal with specials. Don't go crazy on your prices when you first start out either. I know, like I said, you definitely want to be charging what you're worth. If you putting out quality, you taking your time with your clients. You definitely want to get paid for what you're doing. But just keep in mind when you're starting out, it's really important to have a good price point to bait people and get people into your chair first, okay? And then you can slowly, slowly raise your prices now. I went from $35 sewings to $40 sewings to $45 to $55 to $60 to $65. You see what I'm saying? I kept going up just like that, not even like making a huge jump in my price, but just making a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit to where it's like, okay, she ain't raising them too high. I can still, I can still, you know, bang with that. She ain't raising them too high. But you want to slowly raise them the better you get. Be humble now. That's a, that's an important thing, just to be humble. Take your time and be patient with yourself. Be patient with your growth, okay? Number four is free, free services. services. What? Okay, I know y'all like, what did she just say free? I ain't working for free. I know y'all looking at me like that. First, I started off with discount prices and starting low and stuff like that. And then I went all the way to free. Let me tell y'all something. And this is why I say humble yourself. Don't be too big headed in this game. It is much better to give and to receive. And I learned that from this organization I was in. I reached 2035. Shout out to my boo Sierra Hunter. She was the founder and organizer of the whole organization. And it was basically, we were hairstylists, makeup artists that came together and we just did work for free. We went to the uh, women's shelters and we gave them makeovers like I think once a month. And we did like fashion shows for free. We did photo shoots for free. And let me tell you why. 
let me tell you why that that statement that verse that bible scripture is so true it is so much better to give than to receive and i tell you all those times we volunteered and we did some first of all it not only makes you feel good and not only you know um gives you a purpose it makes you feel like you have a purpose and you know using your gift to help others but it's also going to benefit you and don't do it just because it's going to benefit you do it i would say definitely do it from the kindness of your heart because I, when i say i used to love that like i used to love it i didn't care about not getting paid i really did not even look at that whatsoever like i just loved to do it like honestly truthfully 100 percent, i loved it with all of my heart and it honestly kept me going because it made me feel like sometimes you get burnt out from doing hair and it made me feel like man you know i'm not doing this in vain you know what i'm saying like it's, it still has a purpose like i still feel good about doing hair because i'm making somebody else smile when i say it benefits you it does like y'all know how many clients i got from them fashion shows you want to make sure you bring your cards you it's still you know you still want to be business minded going into everything so bring your business cards always always keep your business card so when you doing like free services um or you volunteering basically your services at different events and stuff like that girl you finna get you gonna get some clients i'm telling you you gonna get some clients just like the directors of the fashion shows and stuff they might just look at that like you might volunteer for them once you know offer them something for free and they're gonna if they, you did a really good job they're gonna be calling you to book you you know what i'm saying so say you just now starting out on frontals um Ain't nobody gonna come to you if you ain't seen it. <laughs> so you wanna offer like a free service maybe to a family member or really anybody so you can basically get your practice on. And so you can have some pictures to show everybody like, look girl, I can do a frontal. Everything you're doing, yeah, I'm saying it's free, but it's really like still beneficial to you. It's really still helping you at the end of the day. But as long as you're building up your portfolio with them pictures, you good you gonna get something out of that you ain't sweating and working for nothing i'm telling you free services are also good if you trying to get into the celebrity field now i can't speak too much on that because i'm not in the celebrity field i would like working behind the scenes like um eventually get back into like behind the scenes set work and stuff like that do movies you know stuff like that but it could really be beneficial for you to offer some free services to like popular people or something or like say um you know, it's like a famous person coming to the club or something in your city. Try to reach out to them, say, hey, I'm gonna do you, I can do your hair for free, send them pictures and stuff. And right there, if you get your pictures on that celebrity client, girl, you creating a buzz for yourself. And then that celebrity might, you know, take some pictures too and maybe shout you out. That right there, boom, it's gonna expand your business. Just doing that little bit of free work for one person that got that already got the buzz, they're gonna help you get your buzz. You know what I'm saying? Number five, I think. I think this is my last point. It's a lot of little bullets, y'all. I got a lot of bullets on this last point because I feel like this is the most, the most important thing in maintaining. Okay, maintaining. We done already built our clients out of the show. I done, I done took y'all there. I done took y'all there and told y'all how we gonna build this thing. Now we are gonna talk about how to maintain this thing. I'm getting a little hot with this guy customer service you want to make sure you got good customer service don't know you everybody a lot of people can do good hair but don't nobody want to keep coming back to you if you got an attitude or you feel like these clients of yours is wasting your time or you know you don't let's be professionals and let's offer these customers good customer service i'm telling you that's what keeps people coming back to you y'all don't even know how many clients i had that just loved coming to me to talk and that's another bullet under this situation is building relationships with your clients you don't want to treat your client just like a number you trying to get them in get them out, out the door get to know your clients build that relationship with them and i'm telling you i have maintained clients for years doing that for years i made house calls went to you know older people homes that couldn't really get around good i've had people stick with me since from the time i was like 16 all the way up until i was like 21 because i was I had a relationship with them we like became friends and like really talked about stuff and that really 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 will help you maintain your clientele even if you don't got to get all personal talking all your deepest darkest secrets and nothing like that but i'm saying it's just to build like that you know relationship with them to where it's like you know what this is my stylist you want them to claim you okay like that's my stylist like that's who i go to i ain't going to nobody else i've had so many clients even from when i like when i moved and i stopped doing you know taking clients people would tell me all the time like please come back like <laughs> please come back i am not going to nobody else i cannot find nobody else like seriously building that relationship with your clients is 
everything. It's everything if you want to maintain a clientele. The beauty industry is never unknown unless you like on somebody's salary, but it's never unknown. I don't know how much money you're gonna make from month to month. Um, you can kind of see it in advance, but you have cancellations, everything like that. But if you maintain a good clientele and you got them in your book every two weeks, every three weeks, every however, you know, they come in often because they keep they're going to keep coming back to you. Setting yourself up for some stability and you setting yourself up for some like structure in how much money you make. I'm telling you, I'm giving y'all all the tea. Another good thing to um, help maintain clients is keeping a client record card. You can get client record cards at Sally's. A lot of people might think it's so cosmetology schoolish for you to do it. But I think it's really important because that client is going to look like when you take out their client card, they're going to be like, oh, I belong here. You know, you make you want to make your clients feel like they belong. And they do. I don't know why a lot of hairstylists and um, makeup artists and, you know, nowadays get so big headed and treat their clients like, like, they don't matter like they they're your whole business they the ones giving you that money sis like you gotta treat people right like i've seen so many oh my god like y'all don't even understand i've seen so many big headed stylists uh makeup arts and stuff that just are so rude to their clients that just when like even communicating with them it's like uh like real dry and just don't really make people feel welcome to even come to them they make it they make you know their clients feel like they a waste of time or like they don't want to be bothered by them like but they don't want they your business though like how can you not treat people right that's literally creating your business like i don't i, I just i never understood that i've had people come to me just for that reason i might not even did hear it as good as they last hours but they just said this is an honest story this is an honest story some people have came to me saying they just could not go back to the other styles because they had an attitude. I can't, no, don't nobody want to sit in a chair with somebody over you doing your hair with an attitude. Like, mm -mm, maybe she mad today. Maybe she going to burn a little piece of my hair today. I'm not trying to have that. People want to come to the salon and relax or come to your home, wherever you do hair, makeup, whatever. They want to come and relax, have a good time. That's just like you. Think about when you go somewhere, going to get your nails done or something and the atmosphere is just bad. You don't want to go back there. Even if they did a good job, it's like you could find somebody else that's going to treat you right. You want to give your money to people that treat you right. So why not expect that same level of courtesy for the people that you service You know what I'm saying? Customer service is everything, y'all. I'm telling you, everything. I've heard so many stories about people in my chair. This is from experience, y'all. In my chair that just say, I can't go back to, to that salon no more. I can't go back to that person no more because they had an attitude. Somebody got cussed out, like, by they... Girl, I done heard some stories. And it just blows my mind, like, I don't get it. I know, I know clients, it can be a little difficult sometimes dealing with a lot of different people. And it's hard to juggle everything. But if you just maintain a good personality, you be nice to people, and you... You know, appreciate your clients. Get them some water. Like, get them some. They, if, girl, your client gonna be there for two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hundred, eleven hours. You can get them a bottle of water. Make them feel comfortable. If you got a little coffee machine, I used to have my coffee machine set up in my in-home salon. Make my clients coffee. Like, get some donuts. Maybe every Friday or every once in a while, have like some donuts set out for your clients. Make it cute. Make it a, just a nice experience. Cause people come back for your work, yes, but they also come back for the experience. Another thing is knowing your client's hair or makeup or whatever you do. This goes along too with the whole client card or whatever, but what I used to do is kind of like make plans for my clients. So it's like, okay, I see where your hair is. We'll talk about like their hair goals or whatever, where they're trying to get to, what their problem is. I will give them knowledge to take home. A lot of, oh, a lot of stylists is like this too, y'all. They be so tight-lipped with their clients because they want them just to keep coming back. But you want to help your clients maintain their hair at home too and i feel like that's just only right i feel like that builds a level of trust between you and your clients let them know some tips that they can take home they still gonna come back to you everybody likes to just be pampered and taken care of and get their hair washed like all that stuff feels great it feels nice to go get your hair done and just relax and get your makeup done get your nails done all of that feels nice so don't don't be so stingy and tight-lipped like oh i ain't gonna tell them what to do at home they're gonna stop coming to me don't be like that give them advice and tips that they can take at home Create for them like a hair plan, basically telling them what to do while they're at home, while they're not in the salon. Give them, you know, instructions. I used to send out, like if my clients requested, I used to send them out like detailed notes, detailed letters and stuff and, and steps on how to take care of their hair at home. I literally used to do that, send out emails. 
girl you want to make them like a plan and then tell them a plan of, as to what you're going to do to their hair how many treatments they need protein treatments if you need they need more moisture tell them they need this many steam treatments they need to be coming back every two weeks for a deep condition just basically make them a customized plan so they can set in their mind like okay this girl this she they know what they doing okay so they they know what they doing to my hair so I'm gonna keep coming back and we're gonna go ahead and get this plan in motion. People like stability. People like coming to places that, you know, is gonna really take care of them, not just for now, but in the long run as well. And it all goes in together with just building a relationship and giving people good customer service. Like, like I said, all this stuff comes full circle. Honestly, it was not hard for me to build my clientele. Um, it can be hard for some people, but don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged, just keep working. Please try to apply some of these steps. Um, keep working at it, keep going. You, another thing, you have to be consistent. You might start off small, but baby, you gonna end big, okay? Just do not quit, do not quit. The worst thing you could do is quit. Keep going, girl, apply these steps. If any of y'all got some advice for anybody else, make sure y'all comment down below. If I miss anything, if you have some questions, comment down below. I'm going to try my best to get back to you. I'm going to try, girl. I'm going to try. My next video, I think I'm going to be telling you guys how to get into a salon, whether it be booth rent, commission, whatever. But salon is another way that you build your clientele up because people like coming to you know, buildings and salons where they feel safe. So make sure y'all stay tuned for that. Like I said, if y'all have any questions, even if y'all have questions about the next thing I want to talk about, Comment down below so I can bring those questions to the next video. Yada yada, we can get the ball rolling on that. Okay, how much of y'all sat through this whole thing? I feel like I talked so much through this video, but I wanted to get all of that out. Like I said, I really, really think these tips can help you. It can help. I hope it can help in some way, shape, or form. Because honestly, all this stuff works for me. And I was a very successful hairstylist, honestly. So y'all just keep watching because I'm going to be sharing y'all like towards the end of this series how I make a lot of money on YouTube. And how being in this beauty industry is not just a one-way street. There's so many opportunities for you. There's so many different avenues to take. I'm telling you, the world is yours, okay? So anyway, thanks again for watching, y'all. Go ahead and down this one. Yeah, stay tuned for video number three. It'll be coming really soon, and I will see y'all then.